want to welcome members of Silo that are back this week. They were ministering in College Station last week. God bless you, youth group, and uh, it's good to have you back. The, uh, the camp's coming up, the Pioneer Camp. New Tabor is going to have a very strong presence. Uh, Silo, the, the youth group is going to be ministering there. I'm going to be ministering there. I'm so excited. Uh, you ought to come to some of the Vespers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, these guys are going to really get after it, and we're going to have a, a, just a great time in the Lord. That is the third week in June. It's going to be Pioneer Camp. You live here. You ought to come by. I think Vespers start at, um, I don't know, sometimes they start at 9. <laughs> but maybe that's too late for some of you, but uh, you're welcome to come anytime. All right. I have a job to do. I need to minister as quickly as possible, but be competent. And uh, I've got a lot of material, and I've got to do it. So, fellas in the back, Jesse, keep up with me, okay? We're going to move as quick as possible. I want to begin a series today that says, it, the title of it is, Prayers That Will Change Your Life. You, you, you live around God, you're a Christian, your life should be in an ever constant state of change. Because God is powerful, and we can't know all about Him in this life. I mean... He's incredibly complex, huge, and vast. So a life with Christ is an exciting life because it's a life that leads from glory to glory. You don't, get, you don't get fixed in this little mold with God. He's bigger than that. It's an insult to God to say, yeah, I got saved and hadn't changed in 50 years. Really? Really? I mean, he's complex. He's huge. Your life is continually transforming from glory to glory. So we're going to talk about prayers that are going to change your life. Millions of people today treat prayer like a lifeline call. You ever watch that million dollar program or cash cab? You, know, you get a lifeline. That means if you don't know the answer, then you can make a phone call. So people say, all right, I can't do it myself. Let's dial that number. So we call God up and say, hey, God, I've been handling my life so far. And this question is a little bit too difficult. What do you think? That's not what prayer is really about. But that's what millions of Christians have turned prayer into. That kind of prayer is not going to change your life. As a matter of fact, you're going to look up. It's going to be like, well, sometimes he answers and sometimes he doesn't. What's wrong with God? Well, there's nothing wrong with God. Maybe our methods are faulty. Maybe our relationship isn't really where it should be. Matthew chapter 7. And verse 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Okay, God. James chapter 4, 2. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. All right, God, great. Then let's ask away. Let's just ask God whatever we want, and let's see what happens. This is why people are asking God, for Mini Coopers and Mercedes Benzes. They're asking to go from their single wide to a double wide. They're asking God for favors. They're not asking God to involve himself in their life. God's turned into a lifeline by most American Christian standards. Somebody once recently made a comment to me because they asked me to pray for them and I prayed for them. They saw me the next day, and they said, your prayers didn't work for me. <laughs> I said, well, I'm really sorry. You know, wish I was the spiritual giant. You thought I was. That's the lifeline prayers. That's not God's plan or his will. And if God ain't working for you, that's reason why. is because we don't know God the way we should know him. We're not doing what we're supposed to be doing with God. And what we're doing is extremely human. And it's understandable. But to be a grown-up, mature Christian, it's a little deeper than that. And your frustration is going to be less. James chapter 4 and verse 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. Does that sound familiar? I'm not saying everything you ask God is just about your lust. But how many times do you say, God... I want what you want. God, what is best for me? We don't ask that question very often because we know what's best for us. Because what's best for us is what we want. But not always what we need. Prayer is, number one, talking 
with God. Talking with God. More than a one-way conversation. God, what do you think? I'll never forget one of the best answers of prayer I ever got from God, and it really wasn't a direct answer. It was an answer, but it wasn't, you know, that thing I could say, okay, I'm going to do this. I was battling whether to stay at a large church in Colleen, Texas, where I was the youth pastor, and I was the next in line to become the pastor of a church of 500 people. And man, it was great stair step. I said, man, I'm paying my dues. I've been here for nine years, and, and the board's already talking about me stepping in as pastor. This is going to be exciting. Love the people. It's great. Have a big youth, have, a, have had a successful, successful youth ministry here. I was excited. Someone called me from East Texas and said, Brother David, we're looking for a pastor. We're a struggling church, a lot of promise here, but what do you think? Would you like, you know, and I said, well, I, well let me get back with you. I don't, I don't know. I began to pray. I said, God, what do you think? Is this you? I didn't hear anything. And I began to think, okay, now I want to be with God. Wherever I am, I want to be with God. I don't want to get out of his will, especially ministry. So I said, I kept asking, I said, God, what do you think? Should I stay here and wait as an associate, because I was beginning to get frustrated. Or should I go and take a pastorate and, and put my wife and, and young children in a very nerve-wracking situation because they couldn't even promise us a salary? What do you think, God? Not much came back. And finally, I spent a little bit more time. I kept asking God, and here was his answer. He said, David, if you stay at Faith Temple, I'm going to be with you. I said, okay. He said, if you go to Palestine, I'm going to go with you. God was leaving it up to me. I was asking him what to do. And he said, wherever you go, I'm going to bless you. And I'm telling you, that was the best answer. And I thought, okay, all right. So you're saying this is my decision. Both places are good places. He said, yes. When you talk with God, expect him to talk back. Wait on him to talk back. Because prayer is seeking him first. Not in desperation. We treat God, we were desperate. God, I need, I need, I need, I need. Why? <laughs> I got nothing else. Go to him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Don't wait till you're desperate or at your wit's end. Go to God first. God, what do you think? I'm working with the elder board. We're, we're, we're trying our best to change our direction. Every single time I pray to open an elder meeting or a congregational meeting, some of you could probably repeat the prayer that I pray. When I'm asked to open those, those meetings with prayer, I say, God, let our thoughts be your thoughts. Let our decisions be your decisions. Let us do what you want us to do, what you've called us to do. You've probably heard me pray that. That's what we're supposed to be doing. It's not that we all debate and, 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 and decide what's humanly feasible and then say, God, what do you think? No, we go to God first. We center ourselves in prayer and say, God, we want to do what your will is. This is your church. Not in desperation. First. That's what prayer really is. Prayer is also touching God. Because when you talk with God, you touch his heart. He can't wait to hear from you. And I'm talking to sinner, and I'm talking to saint both. Some people think, well, pastor, I need you to pray this prayer for me. Hey, I'd be thrilled to pray for you, even if my prayer doesn't work, okay? I'd be happy to pray with and for you. But God wants to hear from you. It wasn't the preachers who met at the courthouse and prayed for rain. It was the church in the city that met at the courthouse and prayed for rain. God wants to hear from people, not just clergy. So when you pray, you're touching and tugging at God's heart. Moms, dads, when that baby says your name for the first time, yeah, 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 you know, or whatever comes out, oh, you know, there may be spittle involved. Oh, you're thrilled because they tried to call your name. How much more does God sit on pins and needles waiting to hear? From you. You don't want God to hear from you through me all the time. God wants you to call his name. And you know what? You might not be eloquent. You may not have a book of prayers. God understands Cajun. I'm sorry. 
I'm watching the swamp people thing. <laughs> shoot them, Elizabeth, shoot them. You know, I mean, I, I can't. <laughs> God understands that dialect. God understands South Georgia Hick. He understands Minnesota Norwegian. It doesn't matter your accent or your eloquence. God loves you and wants to hear from you because when you talk with God, you touch God. And when you touch God, he moves toward you and that's when coincidences begin to happen in your life. Prayer is also getting to know God better. Knowing him. When I was a youth pastor, I'd have young people come and say, Pastor Dave, is this a sin? I'd say, what do you think? Well, I'm asking you. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll say, probably not. I'm not sure. I would always answer the young people, what is God telling you? Well, well, eh, I'm not sort of thinking it might be. Well, if you think it might be, it definitely is. God speaks to you. When you know God, you don't have to ask about God. You don't have to wonder what he's thinking. You know him. When Rhonda said, David, come here. I knew I wasn't going to get a kiss. It had been great, but I knew something's wrong with the wardrobe. She said, sometimes my collar, this is a button down. She said, sometimes it flies up. And some of the other ladies out there going, get that collar down. I'm speaking the keys of the kingdom. And you're going, get that collar down, you know. I knew, I knew what Rhonda wanted. I thought there's something wrong with the wardrobe. I wasn't wondering what she wanted because I know her. And when you know God, you don't have to say, God, what do you think? You know what he thinks. Prayer is knowing the one that you love and the one that loves you. Prayer is also being with the one who loves you and the one that you love very much. Being with them. Spending time with them. I told you this last week, but... We prayed that first time and it didn't rain. And it, weeks and weeks went by. I wanted something better than that. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't happy. And, and, and I, I was driving to Brian and I was thinking about Elijah when he went back and he, he bowed down. He prayed seven times, go back. What do you see? I don't see anything. Come back. I pray. He prayed again, sent his servant back. He said, what do you see? I see a cloud the size of a man's fist. I'll pray again. He prayed seven times until it rained. And I thought, you know what? If that's good enough for Elijah, it's good enough for Caldwell, Burleson County. So I immediately called Brother Jim. I said, Brother Jim, what do you think? He said, I'm, I'm there, David. He said, I'm hoping, we we're hoping that we're going to get some rain this weekend. I said, well, I just heard the forecast, and it's partly sunny, high of 87 degrees. No percentage. You're not saying anything about percentage of rain. And that weekend, when we planned that prayer the second time, that weekend we got the big gully washer. And then the night before, we thanked God and prayed for more. We got another good rain. I believe that when you spend time with God, he will talk to you. He will say, David, he'll say, he'll call your name and say, Let's pray again. We need to hit our knees again. He will instruct you if you're spending time with him. And I'm not saying that when you're driving, when I'm driving to Brian, I'm not going, holy, 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 holy. I'm not doing that. It's normal type of reactions. That I'm sitting there, God moves me. I says, God, what, what, do, we, what do we need to do? Help me. What do, what do you suggest? And then I listen with extreme attention. Talk to God. Be with him. Touch his heart. Prayer is also waiting in his presence. Being patient and waiting in God's presence. Don't be in a hurry. Don't try to rush things. Wait in God's presence. Well, he didn't answer me. I need an answer right now. I need to wait on God. It's not because he's slow to act. Sometimes He's moving other things. I remember one time we were praying for something, and Rhonda said that God, God told her, said the reason we don't have an answer to prayer is because God's moving on someone else's heart to bring that answer, and they haven't, they haven't obeyed him yet. It's the methods that he decides to move in, and sometimes you're not ready for the answer. Sometimes you're not prepared for what you're asking for. God's an awesome father. He knows exactly what you need, when you need it. He will not let you go through something that you can't bear. He will protect you and guide you. Wait for him. Be patient in his presence. Because you know you talk to him. You know you touched his heart. You know him. And you're spending time with him. Go ahead 
and wait in his presence. One of the things that I like to say is, Lord, speak to me and tell me what I need. It's not that lifeline thing, guys. It's not that phone call in desperation. Where you're saying, God, it's me. You know it must be bad. Do you enjoy those friends that only call you when they need help? You say, okay, how can I help you? Because you know that's what it's going to be. It's not, hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. You know, how, how are things going? It's always something else. It's always, I know why this phone call is here. And God's got more patience and love than I do or you do. But friends, spend time with him. Say, Lord, speak to me and tell me what I need to hear. Because you're not always going to agree with what he's going to say. But your faith says, God, I must need to hear that. You know what? If you hear a still small voice in your mind that disagrees with you, it's probably God. It's probably not you. Have you ever disagree with yourself? Oh, no. You, you, you line up your case and you justify everything you always want to do. But often when God speaks, it's going to be something a little different. Listen to it. It might just be God giving you instruction. And it is probably what you need to hear. And then you say, Lord, be it unto thy servant. I'm going to do my best, God, to do what I'm supposed to do. Not what I want to do, but what I should do. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The rewards come when you seek God first. First. Will God answer if you make that lifeline call? I'm not telling you not to make a lifeline call. I'm saying don't live like that. Lifeline call, I've made tons of lifeline calls. But it is immature and disappointing for me to live that way. I want to be someone that diligently seeks God. Every time you pray, church, God hears you. He hears your mature prayers. He hears your stupid prayers. He hears everything. He knows everything. Every time you pray, God is listening. I've got a half a sermon to go, and I'm not going to preach it. I'm going to wait till next week because, because of time. We have a lot of things today. But I believe I want you to digest that part, that prayer is more than just that lifeline. Prayer is something that will change your life when you diligently talk, touch, know God, be with God, wait in his presence and say, Lord, tell me what I need to hear right now. So many times I've wanted something that was contrary to what God was saying and what God was leading and directing. What I wanted was good. It was logical. It made sense. But it wasn't where God was going. And it was a challenge to my manhood and my spiritual maturity to say, God, whatever you want to do, let's go there. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that is accomplished. That's what prayer really is really is. Next Sunday, I want to deal with the issue about the prayer of confession, one of the important prayers that will change your life when you learn to live a life of confession, where you're constantly in a state of giving your life and your heart and your soul to God. Stand for me, please, across this building. I want you to close your eyes before we sing our closing hymn. Sarah Joe, if you would just play something that you were playing while we were while we were praying, I think it was turn your eyes upon Jesus or something like that. Would you just close your eyes right now? And I want you to begin to wait on God. Let's just invite him to speak to our hearts right now. Heavenly Father, we love you very much. We believe you are. We trust you with our lives and we demonstrate 
that belief and trust by our attendance today. We showed up to this place to be involved in the worship and the prayer, to be involved in the songs of God. We've shown up today to, to be with you, to be around you, because something just might happen to our life. Our life might be changed. Now, God, we need. We need direction. We need your comfort. We need your voice. Would you please speak to us right now? Would you please talk to us? Tell us what we need to hear right now for the next day. What is most needful in our spirit and heart? And we're going to dare to trust to hear from you. Congregation, I want you to just stand in, in silence. And I want you to listen to God. Try your best to just put everything out of your mind. No distractions. Let's just wait on God for a few moments and listen for his voice in your heart. Thank you, Father, for your voice. Thank you for your love and your care for us. We thank you, Father, for being who you are. God, forgive us of our sins. We confess our faults, the sins of our nation, the sins that we have personally. Our sin is ever before you, and God, forgive us. We ask that you'd bless our country, bless our marriages, bless our children, bless this congregation, Father. Lord, we ask for your intervention in our lives and your voice in our hearts. We love you. We cherish that time when you speak to us. And we'll not only be quick to listen, but we'll be quick to obey your voice. We honor you. We love it when you talk to us. We love it when you hear us. In Jesus' name, amen.